And good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime. Tonight, we are focusing on national and international issues here on Perspectives as we talk about President Obama's pick for the Supreme Court. Supreme Court Justice nominee Sonia Sotomayor going through confirmation hearings in Washington, D.C., our guest in studio here to recap those hearings and bring us a little bit more on the national and international front. We're pleased to be joined by Bronx Nets political correspondent and analyst Lee Bynes. He also works with Retrovision Media. And Lee, it's a pleasure to have you here. Good to be back. On the set of Perspectives. Good mm -hmm. to have you. As we talk a little bit about Justice Sotomayor, mm -hmm. a lot was being made about her confirmation hearings. The fact that would she be able to withstand the Republican onslaught, particularly when it came to questions in regards to her, uh, her, her being a Latina and her really speaking out as what some quote as racist. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts about how Supreme Court Justice uh, nominee Sotomayor has made it through the process? Well, you know what? It's, it started off um, rather rough for her, starting right from the beginning on Monday when the hearings uh, started. She, uh, she had to sit through a half hour of, uh, well, 10 minutes. It was 10 minutes initially of each and every <laughs> senator having an opportunity to uh, make a statement. And that, it went on through the, for the, the duration of the entire day. So her, her family members, supporters who were there had to sit through uh, this whole process and, and, and let the senators say what they wanted to say. She had a bunch of friendlies on the Democrats and the Republicans came out swinging even in their opening statements. Uh, so so it, was, it was pretty rushed and uh, rough on her. And she was hobbled, you know, not just by the, uh, the broken ankle, but uh, um, hampered by the um, by some of the statements that she had made uh, throughout the course of her her career, especially in the last um, uh, couple of years, they really have uh, gone after her. And, and let's talk about that for a second, because even in the confirmation hearings, she made some very strong statements, pretty much in regards to uh, defending her nationality. Some people feel like even giving it a boost, mm -hmm. but yet and still was taken to task by the Republicans. We knew uh, one Senator uh, Graham who really reported by saying, if I was to say the same thing, mm -hmm. I'd be viewed as a racist. Do you think that, uh, first of all, her comments were racist? And second of all, do you think that it was the wrong thing to come out of, out of the mouth of somebody who is actually a, a justice in the court system, irregardless of the fact that she becomes a Supreme Court justice nominee. Well, you know what? Um, let's put it this way. I don't think anybody could actually defend what she said. Um, I don't think, I, I, and it was definitely politically incorrect, but you have to, let's not take it out of context. Again, as mentioned on the previous program, she said this as she was speaking to a group of Latino aspirants, people who were um, uh, who have been challenged uh, previously uh, by society, and I think uh, she was trying to say, uh, let let the, her audience know that look, you know what, you can do this, we can do this, you know. And so uh, it was. She was speaking more from from a standpoint of pride. However, uh, the flip side of that, again, uh, Lindsey Graham, when he indicated uh, during the hearings that if, as as a white male, if he had said some of those same things, he would have been taken to task and he would have been judged a lot more harshly and not necessarily down the line when he was seeking higher office, but he would have been, his, his career could have effectively been over. In a lot of ways, he has a point and he's absolutely right. However, is this something that should keep her off, off the bench? I don't think so. And obviously a lot of people, even Senator Orrin Hatch said, well, we just want to check the fact that uh, she really is going to be able to abide by the law. Orrin Hatch saying in Washington that uh, his main concern was not the fact that she would have empathy because they talked about the fact that she's a woman who carries empathy and it's mm -hmm. good to have empathy yeah. but the problem being that if you have empathy but not being willing to apply the law because of empathy mm -hmm. uh, I think that was on the hearts and minds of uh, several in the Republican Party but all that to say at the end Senator Orrin Hatch says at the end well even given that, if she can prove that to me, I think she shouldn't have a problem being confirmed. Well, you know, I don't think so either. And I think uh, on that particular issue, I think she put a lot of, I think she put that issue to rest because um, uh, she explained that no matter, you know, what, what her position is, um, she is capable and definitely willing and, and dedicated to uh, applying the law, um, adhering to precedent. Um, dealing with um, and, and keeping stare decisis, primarily stare decisis means whatever is, 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 is current law, whatever has set a president, that's what she's going to stick with. And when she was challenged on, uh, on the Second Amendment issues, on the abortion right issues, I got some notes here, and uh, affirmative action, uh, she made it very, very clear during the confirmation hearings that she is capable of, uh, 
of rendering her her brand of justice or across the board evenly uh, as it should be as as opposed to um, uh, having any empathy or sympathy for uh, anybody that comes to before her. It was interesting to point out, though, that when they were having this conversation, uh, one of the questions that arose was, was President Obama asking or anybody from the administration whether or not they had any direct contact with her in regards to her views on abortion rights, mm -hmm. in which Justice Sotomayor says no. Had someone from the Obama administration spoken in regards to those abortion rights, would we be looking at a different situation? You know what? I <laughs> I find it difficult to believe that the the folks in the Obama administration didn't ex cover that particular issue because that I, I can't remember recall a uh, Supreme Court justice uh, confirmation hearing or process uh, in, in the past and I, I go back you know past um, uh, uh, Ju uh, Thomas uh, so I, I can't believe that they didn't discuss that I think um, uh, she handles herself brilliantly when they asked her that particular issue because she's Catholic. I, in, in the interest of full dis disclosure, so am I. My, both of my daughters are in Catholic school. But in spite of that, um, in my own personal experience, would I be for, uh, for choice or, or pro-life? I would be uh, pro-choice. Pro, uh, pro pro, that is the law of the land. That is, has been around for 30 some odd, 40 some odd years. That is not going to change, and I don't think that Judge Sotomayor is going to join the court and change that. And I think she set um, set the groundwork to let people know that look, I am not an activist judge. I am not here to change things, and 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 that's an issue that the left was looking very very carefully at when all of this information came out that she had graduated from Cardinal Spellman High School. I am absolutely certain that those on the left were thinking right away, oh my God, is this going to be a situation where this woman may get on the court and change things or look to be um, um, a, a bit not confrontational, but uh, be somebody that we should keep an eye on. I think I think people are pretty satisfied that she's definitely going to uh, apply the law and, and, and keep that decision just the way it is. Well, in just a few minutes, we're going to continue our discussion with Lee Bynes as we shift focus from Judge Sonia Sotomayor, the Supreme Court Justice nominee by President Barack Obama, to President Barack Obama. How is he actually faring in Washington, D.C., and what is his stance on some of the major issues that he talked about during the campaign? How good is he coming through on those? We're going to talk about that when we return right here on Perspectives. <laughs> 